Yeah, yeah. yeah I like sure. yeah. I like having more than two. It gives a lot more like creative freedom sometimes. Like whether you want to add like a noise in the background of a bass or anything, just like you'll be able to have that extra oscillator. And I really like the comb filter in Vital. Yeah. Okay. You see, I feel like that's one of the things that I kind of don't find a lot of these very user-friendly, like, music apps mm -hmm. very appealing is that this ship, a lot of times it ship you away of, like, that specific creative freedom. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times, uh, like, I've noticed, like, I've seen a video on YouTube of some guy going on Steam, mm -hmm. uh, looking through, like, these music pr uh, program making mm -hmm. uh, games that they have on Steam. Yeah. And a lot of the, a lot of the, He's trying to make, he's like a music producer and he's mm -hmm. trying to make music in this like Steam game, but mm -hmm. it's a music making game. Yeah. And a lot of these uh, apps and games that I've been seeing is that it's just a lot of times loops or mm -hmm. already generated sections and you're just mm -hmm. literally putting the pieces together. Got it. And although I, 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 I like the concept of user friendly, mm -hmm. but that's definitely, how to say, stripping away a lot of the creative freedom that you would get if, yeah. if you were to just like learn mm -hmm. on FL Studio, Reference, where you yeah. can definitely uh, get into like, tweaking an individual kick drum mm -hmm. and not having to do that with like the loops and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought that was like very interesting to see like that video of like that music producer get into this like very user friendly because it was yeah. literally just like this <clears throat> music making game where, oh, you want some drums? Well, here's like 10 loops that you could just use yeah. like within this app. Mm -hmm. So I think like the flexibility of like the music uh, program I, that I you're like using. I like laying my own drums down and like yeah. doing my own drum patterns most definitely. I get very intricate with my drums. I feel like like even with just the kick, like I'll use like three different kicks and then like a body kick on the clap. Like it's weird. Yeah, and, and yeah. Even, even at the end of the video. <laughs> <laughs> like I just, I, I can go like super micro into the production and stuff. It's, yeah. Yeah, and, and even at the end of the video, this music producer, although he was able to make a, a beat that uh that you know he was able to consider at least satisfiable within the mm -hmm. app he wasn't satisfied as a music producer to like claim a to claim it to, to claim yeah. as a specific sound because mm -hmm. he's saying like yeah like there's just not that much flexibility to really micro manage uh, your production because they're just really giving you like a really user-friendly uh scale of how to mm -hmm. tweak your music yeah uh, versus I know the other programs might be harder, like Ableton, FL Studio, Reaper, Cubase. Mm -hmm. um, but you do have the creative flexibility to really get in there and mm -hmm. tweak that certain single instrument and really work within the sing signal. Yeah, That's why a lot of these user-friendly uh, music-making apps don't give you. They don't really give you the flexibility to work within the actual source. It's like, nah, exactly. here's a kit. Yeah. And make some you can make some music with these yeah. kids but i feel like not yeah production in general just is a little it's a lot harder like especially just transitioning over from djing like into like really learning like getting in depth into production and like learning you know all the nitty-gritty stuff that comes along no, with i wanted it. to quit so many times same here i, 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 I wanted to quit so many times like same. my first two yeah. my first two years if i want to admit mm -hmm. as i was like trying to release music i'm like, mm -hmm. like what am i doing like why am i why am I putting myself to this? Yeah. Bro, you wanted? Bro, I quit 10 times already. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was, the same. I was like, damn. Like, I have my days for sure. <laughs> I was like, okay, it's crazy because I'll like reflect. I'm like, no, nah, like I see these YouTube videos of music producers like having fun in the studio. I was like, hey, this wants to be like this. Yeah. But it is like that. The yeah. frustration, the, oh, like I can't get this job to be the way it is. Or mm -hmm. like, that's all that shit that it, it's all, it's all prerequisite to yeah. the music that you want to hear. Come it's from getting it's literally getting past those like blocks that like really will make or break your production like i feel like the hardest part is like navigating all of it on your own you know like obviously yeah there's like youtube tutorials and stuff that are very helpful and like you can even go to school and stuff for it but like there are there will always be troubleshooting like regardless if it's like within sound design or within the dot itself it's like you got to figure out how to navigate around it. And that's the hardest part, I feel like. Because you're making sounds that technically shouldn't even be played at the same time. And, like, there's no one way to make it sound mm -hmm. good together. You just kind of have to figure it out yourself. You yeah. Know? And, like, once you realize that, you'll get a little bit less frustrated. But at the same time, you're still, like, it's a, I think, like, producing sometimes it's a lot of, like, uh, trial and I don't want to say trial and error because there's definitely trial and error. Mm -hmm. But it's like after the trial and error, what you figure out 
after that trial and error, it like sticks with you so that the next time you produce, mm -hmm. like you don't have to worry about that no more, but you're also worried about something else now. So you just got to keep figuring that out until you realize like, okay, now I can get this sound out of it. Yeah. So now I can start moving on to trying to make another sound. And then eventually you just start get a, getting like your repertoire of what you know how yeah. to do and like what you like to do. And, yeah. And then you Finding like, your sound. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. And mm -hmm. I, I think I, in the beginning, you just want to have your sound already, or you mm -hmm. just want to make a certain style of music, like right off the back. But it's like, is that even you? Like, yeah. Is, that, is what you're trying to make like you, you know? Like, mm -hmm. And then eventually I just feel like people find it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a producer uh, mental battle that we hear a lot from other producers. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like, because you let, you know, you, these producers will let you hear it. Mm -hmm. And you'll even tell them, like, even as a general a reaction, like, hey, dude, like, honestly, you can release this. And I'm, I believe people will like it. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's, this shit's got to, nah, it's just, mm -hmm. nah, I'm not releasing it for public ever. Mm -hmm. uh, you're the homies. Like, you're going to be the only ones that hear it for sure. But right. uh, but that, that's the mental battle that I, I see a lot of producers go through. Like, mm -hmm. they... It's a perfectionist thing too, you know. It's yeah, very yeah. toxic. That's just mm -hmm. very toxic. And although we like you. we like to think that's very best for us to always like keep on making the tweaks, making the tweaks on every little thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's definitely a fine line though, like mm -hmm. of being disciplined to be like, nah, like this I'm too hard to on myself. This. Yeah. yeah, I'm too hard on myself. <laughs> you know what? Fuck that. I'm fucking deleting the hi hat. I'm calling it a day. You yeah. know, that's it. Sometimes I'll just walk away completely. I'm like, you know what? Today's just not the day. I'm not doing it. Me and my girlfriend, Ableton, we are not getting along. There you go. Like, I feel like that's, that's a healthy way to, to look at the yeah. relationship. You know, like, you don't want to be in a toxic relationship with your dog, bro. Exactly. Like, <laughs> For real. Like, once once that once that <laughs> dog starts stressing you out, just walk away, bro. You don't want to start throwing fists with your dog. Hey, like, you know, I, I feel that, bro. I feel like there's days where I'm trying to, like, get into the doll. Mm -hmm. I, I want to do the shit that I wanted to do. And it does that shit. And it's like, okay, like. We on a vibe today. And then the other day, she want to do some shit. She just wants to fight for no reason, Yeah, I'm, bro. I'm like, hey, I'm like, trying yeah. to do nothing. What are you talking and you about? Straight up. Like, you were able to do this shit for me last week. What's the fucking difference this week? Yeah. Why are you mad at me? Yeah. Like, what I do? And then you got to sit there and figure it out. And work know, it out. Like, you're not telling me. You're not giving me any clues. I know. I'm, listening. <laughs> I'm listening. But like, no way you're not telling you. Nah, but she was mad because I had it at 48,000 right. sample rate. That's, yeah, that's for real. So Why I is it not to, at 41? I put it back to 44.1, you know? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, 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 they don't be telling you, bro. They don't be telling you. They're like, figure it out. I'm like, oh, okay, sample rate. My bad, baby. Yeah. 44.1. Yeah. 44.1, guys. 44.1, Film 40, 48. Yeah, film 48. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, testing my knowledge, Ty Lopez. Straight up, but, yeah, yeah, the struggles of producing, but it is it is fun. Mm -hmm. there, there's always that like mm -hmm. five minutes, five to maybe ten minutes in the hour session where you're like, this is a vibe. I know, but then when the feeling of when you finally make something that's like good, you're like, holy shit, finally. I think it's the, like it's like oof, it only took forever, but we're here, <laughs> we're here, we made it. Like I think I just recently like discovered like the old like my ultimate satisfaction of making music is mm -hmm. after i get something done that i i believed i was really good and then i go out to dj and i drop it and then i see people like react how i react yeah i was like oh fuck like that's <laughs> yeah. Not, okay, yeah it's not it, yeah. like i was yeah. complaining i was stressing out but that that's pretty cool it's that's the moments cool. like that yeah that's it that's yeah. it yeah, that's when you're like, oh, okay, I was a little too hard on myself. I'm releasing this shit tonight. Fuck it, tonight. Yeah. But then I'm like, damn, do I always got to be hard on myself like that now? And I'm just like, oh. but Yeah, that's the problem, too, where where it may, if you had not been hard on yourself, had the track had been when you had released it yeah. where it's at. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's, that's the hard now, should part. Should I be harder on myself? You like, yeah, me? like. That's yeah. overthinking right there. I think, yeah. 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 Like, is the mental health worth? With the creative alchemist, <laughs> yeah. Like, sometimes, yes, you know what, bro? yes, because like you know, like you got to go through struggle, like to create art. I guess yeah. I don't, no, I'm not believe that. that. I don't know, bro. That sounds so fucking like self. Hey, it's true though. It's some it's true, though. Shit. It's some real artist shit right there. Uh, straight bro. up, straight up. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I have personally, bro, in some projects, it's records that are out too, dude. Like, mm -hmm. like I, I, I went through some shit. Like, mm -hmm. like making this music. Like, it, I wasn't just, like, looking at it from, like, a, 
like a like a natural music like I was literally like being an artist like being vulnerable mm-hmm. like with whatever was going on and whether what whatever came out of that came out of it and going back to when you say like uh playing that and presenting it to the public and mm-hmm. seeing them have the same reaction as you would like that's mm-hmm. just like a a great way to confirm like damn like like what I like there's also people too out there that, that fuck with it yeah, and it's paying off yeah it really yeah. does pay off uh cuz yeah like it's so unique the music that we make mm-hmm. and to find other people like it uh it's also very difficult to make yeah. i feel like so for sure it's like definitely an accomplishment when you make something satisfactory i feel like you know it's like i feel like bass and bass music is like one of the hardest things to produce right Sex. like just because of all of like the bases and the like, noises and the it? little like, like little tiny things like it's very difficult to like, like i bet you someone in bro step was trying to make that shit so hard and someone had to cut them off they were like hey 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 chill like we, we're good right here Let's yeah keep, keep it here yeah it's, it's too like, intricate yeah fucking barely lab was like all right bro <laughs> all right i'm gonna chill then barely my, bad. my bad 2020 watch, watch out <laughs> i mean i mean but but I wouldn't have. I like to think that I don't think that without that mentality, I don't think we would have seen some genres like, especially in bass music, like mm-hmm. Future Rhythm or or Love. Rhythm, Rhythm, in like general. like the current state of Rhythm, Trench, mm-hmm. uh, tr- or Trench, maybe now. Trench. That's what they call it. Whatever, yeah, whatever's going on. What, what what are you saying, Hex? Um, what what. I like I team guess trash, they're, team. they're like interchangeable for me. Like if it doesn't make a difference. Like it's okay. it's, it's just the same way. it's like music. It's like whatever. <laughs> it's like this. Like I know that rhythm like already exists as another genre. Yeah. So I understand what they're trying to do with like the whole trench thing. I guess. Like um, I was getting deep. Yeah. Like, I honestly didn't think it was. It was like it was Twitter. I mean Twitter. Yeah. EDM <laughs> Twitter, man. That shit Twitter is wildin. <laughs> that shit is wildin. You like I don't really personally crazy. like for me personally. I mean, I, I am in no, I am no person to be even be like really caring about how people mm-hmm. care about my opinion. But I don't really care about if people are calling that shit trench or rhythm. Like, yeah. <laughs> personally, I'm probably still gonna call it rhythm just because that's what I've grown to. Yeah. Uh, hear and uh, just say whenever it's, uh, rhythm dubstep. Yeah. yeah. What if they like said like, okay, well, you can't call it bass music no more. You gotta call it heavy music. Then how would you feel? How would I feel off the yeah. bat? I'd be like, yeah. look, bro, like And that's how people feel about the whole like why are yeah. you changing rid of the trench? So yeah. Like, exactly. That's that feeling. I, I understand. But like I also understand where Infect's coming from when he wants to change it to trench, you know, because he's just like For the culture, I feel Yeah. That. For the culture also just because it's it's already in something somebody else's culture. So it's all like, I'm saying is that Americans are not calling that shit football still. It's still small talker. Yeah, <laughs> straight up. That's the way I'm saying shit. <laughs> I'm calling that shit soccer here, son. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of... I don't know how the rhythm greats feel about it. There's a lot of rhythm greats. Like, in fact, is like obviously very the, for the I trench mean, movement. For, yeah. yeah, like, he's all for the trench thing. Um, Subfiltronic. Well, he's so, kind of just off the map. Let me ask them, is so. rhythm just like an American thing? No, it's all over the place. I believe it originated in the UK. Um, and it started... I feel like the person who really, really changed the game like early on for Rhythm was Subfiltronic. Okay. Um, he he really, you know, just made... You know, if you've, you've heard every... Like, pass out and do it again. That's, um, that's yeah, him. Yeah. 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 Uh, he also did DJ Come With a Tune. Like... So, so it was like yeah. more of the sound what was it the so, sound that he was bringing to the table yeah or? it was just a very unique and different thing that no one's ever heard before I feel like uh, and then like obviously like there's a lot of like rhythm crews I guess like the monsters guys and all them who like really helped put that shit on the map if that makes sense like in like the earlier days with like um, let's see early early rhythm days with like AD and LV and the force like super early dubstep rhythm days like it's yeah rhythm has definitely it's evolving a lot for sure so it's so we just keep it rhythm yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean I'm game for it I know it took a lot of influences from the other rhythm that genre that there is but 
yeah, I mean, it doesn't make a difference to me. Like, whatever. Look, if America could take the name football and make a whole new game out of it and not give no type of credence to football, like, yeah, you know, like, I think rhythm's okay. You feel me? Like, yeah, yeah, that I makes sense. Yeah. I think we're good. Yeah. Like, I'm if, I'm in, if I'm in the UK and, and like, you want me to call it trench, all right, for sure. I'll probably culturally respect. I'm going to call it trench. I think most of them in the UK will still call it rhythm. Yeah. yeah. But, and, that's, and that's where my confusion was coming into play because I was like, dude, like, rhythm, I remember rhythm being originated from the UK so I'm just trying to figure out the real difference between it's, trench and this rhythm like, like I'm trying to figure out what the real not, difference is it's because they're all coming from there's the, the actual genre of rhythm like how you spell it R-I-D-D-I-M or whatever it's from an African mm -hmm. uh, genre called rhythm where their drums is is like it's it's not the same drums but like it's very present in their mix, mm -hmm. and that's where like the whole term rhythm, rhythm comes from. Rhythm dubstep, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's like rhythm, almost like like they have the reggae kind of like influences. Kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah, almost. I I don't want to say it's reggae, but it's like well, it did originate in the UK with a lot of people of color. So yeah, okay. I think like a lot of the monsters guys are people of color, and like the like. Sulfotonic and all of them, they're all, yeah. It's so like almost dance holly music yeah. type music. You okay. could say it's like closer to that type of genre. Yeah, but uh, OG OG rhythm, I feel yeah. like th this is a good topic for sure. But rhythm is very, it's a very capitalized word, like a lot. And I feel like this is why people want to change it because a lot of people will hear like sudden death and be like, oh rhythm, and it's like awesome. oh. That's not rhythm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like. Uh, so what's your rhythm? OG stuff. Like, really, like, OG. I'm talking, like, Kaizo Kukuru, Skanking. Yeah. Um, just any of the Monsters guys. Like, really, like, OG, OG stuff. That 140 BPM, like, yeah. hypnotic type. It like. Very, like, uh. One synth almost, like not one mm -hmm. synth, but like one main bass. Yeah, like exactly. Like it's like the simplicity. Yeah. Um, I've definitely I've noticed like as I've grown older, um, the like I started to phase out of like heavy like headbang dubstep, you know, like excision and like fade yeah. into like the rhythm stuff more because it's a it's lot more like moves. techno and like mm -hmm. a lot more low key and yeah, but. Yeah. It's it's a very capitalized word. Like people will he hear midnight tea and be like, "Oh, that's rhythm," oh, that's or like boogie tea and be like, "Oh, that's rhythm." And it's like no, like rhythm is like very like old school people. Like ominous makes rhythm, or you know, like Dak Daniels or like any of them. You know, what do you believe right now is pushing uh, the modern rhythm sound? Ooh. Hmm. Let's see. There's a lot of really good up and comers. Oh, yeah. Or even like top, top people that you believe are pushing or being the pioneers right now. For this um, let's see. Inactive. He is definitely on the come up for sure. I believe Vulgar. I'm not sure if you've heard of Vulgar, but it's three of them, I believe. No one knows who they are. They wear masks like every time they play. Okay. But they have made some crazy shit. So, Vulgar has been really cool. Mile 32, um, Yodo. They're all, like, really, like, on the come up. I really like their production. Um, but they're definitely, like, they deserve to blow up. And they're pushing the boundaries of rhythm. So, oh, so there's a lot of newer artists. Like, newer artists, yeah. Okay. Like, I will still always pay my respects to, like, the OGs, most certainly. But... Yeah, there's a lot of new, fresh stuff in Rhythm. Um, even, like, Just Blue. Uh, he's, like, 15, I believe. Um, and he makes some insane shit. I bought his dub plates. Like, yeah, I was like, damn, bro, I need this shit. Like, 15. <laughs> he's 15, I believe. Yeah, he's still in, like, middle school, high school. So. Let me ask you this. How much would you uh, pay for a dub plate? What's your cap for a dub plate? Man, okay. Wait, can, can you guys explain to me exactly what a dub plate is? Yeah, so in rhythm, like in the rhythm world, there is what's called a dub plate, which is like a song that is pretty much exclusive um, to like 
a certain limited amount of people and like you it's obtainable for you to buy it's just gonna cost you like a pretty penny i guess but um yeah so there's that and then there's specials which is like a one of one song like that's like an artist will make for you like like for that specific person like i just got a special back from zabor today actually uh, so say it again uh, a special a special oh i never heard i never, I never heard this shit yeah it's so it's he, he play, but it's by that artist y- yeah so no one else has it except for me it's my special gotcha. he made yeah, it specifically they, 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 they still play this too yeah sense? yeah they could play it in their oh, sets but okay. like zabor and i are the only two people who have it so uh, yeah, the plates are songs that only if I send to you, you can play. Yeah, and like also they're available for purchase, I guess. Like, okay. but they're like a lot more exclusive. They're not available for free download or yeah, like on people's SoundClouds. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah, those yeah. dub plate specials. Yeah, okay. there's so a lot. It's a private SoundCloud link. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> private SoundCloud link. You already know the yeah. But the most I'd pay for a dub plate, oh man, I I have friends who have paid like two hundred bucks for a special before. Damn. Yeah. So like. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's I like, oh man, my friend Mineral, like he is like the god of collecting specials like he'll have like anyone and everyone make a special for him and he'll pay for it and like he sent me a bunch of his specials and a lot of them are in the mix that i just released but like yeah he was telling me what he paid for him and i was like what the hell like (laughs) so it's crazy but i feel like the most i'd pay is like maybe like 50 bucks for a dub plate for a dub plate yeah damn 200 though for a special, for a special, I would the most I'd pay is like a hundred, hundred fifty, I'd say. Right. But so, like a lot of the time, specials are just made for free because like it's like, oh here you go, like it's like it's for homie shit, you know what I mean? Okay. Like. So yeah. are they streamable anywhere else or no? N- no. So oh, I like okay. the file. Oh, so like I have. Like I'm him and I are the only two people that have, it's not even on SoundCloud. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so but I have the download link. People have to pull up to you. Yeah. Like, to see physically you at a tour yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. That's a good way to get uh around like copyrighted music and to say I don't want to drop it, but I still mm-hmm. want people to like hear it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna send it to like some of my biggest like uh DJs and shit yeah. as like specials, but hey, play this. Yeah. Yeah, and it's crazy yeah. too, because sometimes that conversation can stem Oh, sometimes it'd be like, hey, bro, so, um, yeah, how much for you to just make me, like, a full song, dog? Like, shit. <laughs> yeah, literally, like, that's what a special is. Like, 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 yeah. like, let's say for, for us right now, I want to talk to uh, each of us. Like, mm-hmm. if we were to resort to ghost production, I, I'd like to ask you guys and myself, too, because mm-hmm. I don't know the answer to this. Like, how much would you guys would, if you guys were to resort to this, how much would you cap yourself at paying, like, Ghost production. Because like, I hear a lot of I hear a lot of prices thrown out with like paying for ghost production. Right. Yeah. Mm. Like you know, because I always see a lot of this like price being thrown out. Like, oh yeah, if you want like a really well rounded EDM track or dubstep track, mm-hmm. modern, like it's gonna cost you this much. I'm just like, damn, like I just make my own music. Fuck yeah, this shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, Honestly, but- I've never looked into ghost production, so I wouldn't know like how much it costs. Like, yeah. and it's crazy because I, I I'll come across like, even when I'm on Fiverr. Mm-hmm. I've seen oh, like I've yeah. seen people like offer the ghost production. I even had one of our guest one of our guests, Broshi, was offering ghost production uh, at one of his yeah. announcements. And he's like, "Yeah, if you guys want any of like our stuff, mm-hmm. uh, want me to make some stuff, like I'm doing ghost production services." See? And I guess I asked them like for the rate, but I've always wondered like if I ever did want to seek out ghost production help, like how much would I believe is an affordable, like decent rate for right i feel like just being in the industry though like you would be surprised who has ghost producers like i'll tell you guys like off stream but like but like you would be surprised like i I know we all know that (laughs) (laughs) but even if you were to say the the names if you were to had to Mm -hmm. would we even care like it's like (laughs) <laughs> that, that's the question. Like, that, that's the question I get thrown out. Like, do people care if their favorite uh, artists are not making their own music? And a lot of people have different opinions about it. Like me personally, if I find out my favorite music, or my favorite artist wasn't making their music, I feel some type of way. Yeah, me but too. some people will be like, well, like I, I, if they, if 
if they're like being upfront about it and like they know what's best for their brand and then and that means them getting production from someone else but i like the brand like like you know there's just people have certain uh attachment to certain like brands for mm-hmm. certain reasons i feel but for me yeah like i, I would feel some type of way if i knew I for artists they, yeah like i found out they didn't produce and they portrayed that they were producing i think i'd be like yeah, exactly. I mean, Damn, like, yeah, like you just lied. I mean, to my face. Like, eventually, I feel like it'll catch up to you. You know, like people will ask you production questions, and if you don't know what you're talking about, it will show. Yeah, you thanks. know what I mean. So, like, yeah, it will catch up if you don't like know your own your own stuff. Uh-huh. But going back to like how much I, I don't like. I feel like that's so like a sticky situation to mm-hmm. just go to a bunch of different people and just pay them i feel like if i'd ever even like think about going that way mm-hmm. i'll just find one person and just be like hey like just just be my like yeah. ghost producer and keep well. it under wraps yeah. yeah and like whatever like money like that comes with this shit like it's like you get a split like yeah. and, and now you're just ghost producing for me and you know I'm the, like, an, like, like, like an exclusive contract yeah exactly like, yeah there's a lot of that in it. it. I was about to you say. see, you're giving ideas <laughs> out there. You give me like space lasers and fucking excision. I'm pretty sure that's how it was for me. Hey, don't give boring rich people ideas, son. <laughs> My bad. That's I'm just right? playing. Because like that's what it comes down to. Right? It comes down to boring rich people saying, thinking, oh, you know what? I don't gotta make the music. I could just get an exclusive contract with okay, someone. Well, look, think about it this way. I could still be a producer this way. I could. Like, think about what a uh, movie producer does, right? They get all the different, uh, what's it called, elements for the movie yeah. because they're producing the movie. Mm-hmm. Now I'm producing a brand. I'm producing mm-hmm. a he- the Hex Project. Mm-hmm. I'm producing the uh, Husky Project. You feel me? Like, I'm finding the, the artists to make the artwork. I'm finding the uh, a producer to make the music. And then I'm finding the DJ to go DJ. Like you There's, feel me? Yeah, a lot of that's been done. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like, yeah, I mean, I'll, t- sure. I'll tell you guys all all of it off stream, like from what I from the stuff I know. But like, a lot of that has been done. Like, there's a lot of big big projects that people like are just doing shit behind the scenes. And it's Sorry. Like, yeah. well, like, and it's I, the thing is, like, it w- it wouldn't really like surprise me too much, just because like. Bro, you know how much stupid shit people do for money? Like, and then if you really think about it, like, this is an easy bag if you know how to, like, if you have the money already, I guess. Like, you need a capital. Like, if if you could, if you have the upfront capital, I think, for for a DJ project, Mm -hmm. this could be a good way for you to create revenue like it's mm-hmm. it's not hard to think about you just need that up for capital at first i, think I mean like just, yeah, yeah it's not a lot crazy like if you look at how much like the huge huge names are being paid per hour it's like holy Jesus. f yeah. like that's more than i make in a year like <laughs> like it's crazy to think about but yeah, one hour down yeah and that was an opening set and all you had to do was press play <laughs> <laughs> like damn <laughs> Like, it's crazy, you know? You press play for an hour, there's 60 grand in your pocket. Like, yeah, but see, that's why, like, we do ha- we do look at certain artists, like, a certain way. And if, like, we did hear that they didn't make their music, it would just... It, yeah, and they only... Because they have that much respect for their music. Yeah. And that's the reason that they're famous. If you find out they're not making their music, it's like, bruh. I just think... The, I, just think I don't like the facade sometimes as producers. Like, going back to what you said, like... Mm-hmm. If you're portraying yourself that you are making the music, but we find out it, it was never you, like, mm-hmm. uh, like you know, as long as you're, I think if you're like, able to vocalize, like, in detail, like, what you are doing in, like, in certain roles, mm-hmm. and you're up front and transparent about it, then, like, I think that's always going to be good for you. But, uh, like, throwing a fake facade of what you do, and then people realizing that, oh, okay, like, you weren't really putting in, like, these efforts, uh. And people are going to find out, especially when you go through, like, production sessions or, mm-hmm. you know, people start asking, like, questions that you would all, people will only be able to answer with certain experience. Mm-hmm. And you can't really get... You can't fake that specific, you, can't, yeah. you can't get that certain experience as a producer if you're always going to ghost production, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah like, yeah, you, you can't buy... I don't, you can't buy experience, like, right off the bat. Yeah. Like, you have to work for the, that the experience. Yeah. yeah. Most certainly, most certainly. Decision says otherwise, but <laughs> bless you. Sorry, uh, thank but, you. <laughs> uh, no, but from what from what I've seen, like excision didn't start off 
I believe like that. No, Excision, pro- I think he produced his, his music. Like, in the beginning. But, like, <laughs> when you're gotten- throwing... When you're like in the beginning, oh, but yeah, when so you're look. throwing like four festivals a year and constantly touring, and they're like multi-million dollar that. festivals, there's no way you have time to produce. I like, I definitely get that. Artist, yeah, like wholeheartedly. But yeah. if you're good at delegation, like mm-hmm. there shouldn't be. If you can delegate mm-hmm. time to delegate to mm-hmm. host four festivals, I'm pretty sure you know how to delegate a few hours of your time to, to produce. produce. Yeah. Like that's not. I, I I don't. I'm not trying to because mm-hmm. you you don't get that good at whatever you're doing mm-hmm. by not being able to set time to do what you need to do. You know. Like, yeah. To me, that doesn't make. I mean, I get it. Mm-hmm. I definitely get it. But like, it's just. It's a easy, it's an easy uh, thing to spot out where the transition between where he stopped producing, mm-hmm. like because when I listen to his early music, like it's very I don't want to say simple or anything like that, mm-hmm. but it's very dubstep, like mm-hmm. early dubstep. Yeah, and then what you hear t- for his music today is nothing like what he sounded like, nothing of mm-hmm. his original sound. Mm-hmm. It's just knew of what's popping today and that's when mm-hmm. i realized like oh he's just keeping the brand going now mm-hmm. after a certain like time period he just said all right i just need the excision man to keep going mm-hmm. and it makes sense i guess mm-hmm. and if like he just uh i don't know prioritize business and his brand over the music at that point and, and like i and like uh i will say too excision is a great businessman in that like yeah. delegating that you know i can still find a system for myself to mm-hmm. start release music it's probably gonna be this, this. These releases are gonna be probably a lot more collaborations because yeah. that yeah. a lot of that work. And I'm pretty sure it's all agreed within this collaborators. Like, hey, like I'll probably just give you this or whatever that it looks yeah, like, right? Whatever the we all know. We all know are, that. Yeah. We all know that ever since Lost Sands, a lot of that efforts. He's he's putting a lot of that time and attention into the the entertain live entertainment because obviously like there's a lot of money in that. There's a lot yeah. like. Compared to music streams, like, there's a lot more money in mm-hmm. live events for, for sure. For EDM, especially. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you, I'm pretty sure, like, uh, you you're, you know, Kevin, you, you know this, mm-hmm. you know, like, live yeah. entertainment's like, mm-hmm. I mean, especially with music artists that play uh, shows too, like, they mm-hmm. talk about music streams. You can't really make a living off of music streams. Touring brings in a lot of that a lot good of income, chunk. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, like, even we were talking about this in a previous podcast too, right, Robert, where, um, you talked about like oh like if we could find someone I'd say that we could mentor and like lead like our representation of our sound like mm-hmm. I would I wouldn't I would open that conversation like if I was like, in a situation in my mm-hmm. career where I could probably still push out music but yeah, there's yeah, another yeah. aspect of my Bro, look yeah. all right, check this out I like I, I like the fucking what you were saying I mm-hmm. right, I want a bunch of projects to be like Husky Beyond you know how there's like mm-hmm. Batman Beyond when mm-hmm. homeboy gives like like his Batman suit to someone else. That's what everyone got to start doing now. They got to start making Beyond projects. Hex Beyond, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, fucking make your own prodigy and now they take yeah. the Hex project. And that's yeah. Hex Beyond. Yeah. That sounds so lit. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, like when, you, when it's, when it's time to retire, you're, you're just, Pass you're on. retiring, you're yeah. a dude. Yeah. Yeah. You're retiring, you do, but like you could still, yeah. We, I, you I, delicate. I, I wish we would have got an excision Beyond. You feel me? Excision. Like, you know, yeah. You know? But basically, like- but, uh, Maybe Excision thought about it, but it may be just easier for him to have people work for him and like just still be able to push like his sound. But yeah, yeah. maybe maybe he'll it'll come across uh to his mind that maybe that would be we never hear about these like prodigy type of what he did. Yeah. Yeah. But well, like, didn't he he did the bass music initiative, remember, like on Twitter with uh where he gave away like a hundred grand to like Remember? Uh, was it uh, for like scholarships? Or yeah, the like scholarships yeah, 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 for I the bass that. music, like for producers and stuff. And the, oh yeah, yeah, the initiative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, no, like he's definitely. I mean, he's like put people on, I guess. Dude, he's doing a lot more. <laughs> he's doing. He's a, doing a lot more. <laughs> like for the for the scene versus like making music for the scene, I guess. Yeah, like yeah. I, I don't think it, like you can discredit Excision in any type of way. He's yeah. done more to bass music than anyone. Yeah, like, and, and honestly, as other a, than Skrillex, yeah, pretty much. I yeah, say. yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, in this life, in this chapter of his life, it's probably gives him more meaning mm-hmm. to uh, be able to provide that big platform. Because of his music, now into the transition of yeah. live entertainment. Because he could have definitely been, uh, 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 and this is right as a music artist, he could have been hella selfish. Like, no, Lost Lands, I don't need to do this. I'm going to just cover up 
to, I'm gonna just do torso off and just be way much more nepotistic about it. But mm-hmm. nah, like he's using his nepotism to be able to provide a bigger platform and mm-hmm. give all these people mm-hmm. uh, time. And uh, honestly, uh, I don't think Excision deserves like the hate that I hear sometimes about yeah. like, you know, because I always hear about shit like, oh, like Lost Sands is, is, is just always very nitpicked. He's always just like choosing the same artist. Like he's, he's like trying to control the bass music monopoly. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, dude, Okay, I, I get where you're coming mm-hmm. from, but yeah. if we talk about all the all the things that he's been able to do with this platform and yeah. provide, like that, that outweighs a lot much more than what the hate's like coming from. Yeah, like, most certainly. Because I will like, yeah. I will not lie though, his fan base is scary. That his fan base is really scary. Like they'll like attack you and if you like sickness. Yeah, if you like don't like excision, they're like. Rah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like dinosaur yeah. like they'll like <laughs> literally come like she was funny like they'll come like they'll come for you dude like I remember I was at Lost when I played Lost Sons I was talking mm-hmm. to somebody and I actually uh, didn't uh, I actually said that I wasn't really fucking rid of mm-hmm. and like uh, I remember like this person was like fucking doing this I'm like oh shit never mind. I like, I like <laughs> and, and then like yeah they calmed down <laughs> I'm dead. So yeah, I believe you with that shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of crowds like that, uh, like cult cult followings like that yeah, for sure. And it's, like, it's very, it. it can be very scary. Like I feel like Murata and Sun Death, they have a very much cult followings as well. But it's like they're just. Those fuckers are just angry, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> they just got some shit they need to work out. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> they're not doing too good. They need to let out some rage. The, uh, you know, I hear a lot of the music too, and <laughs> I try not to over. An- I try, you know, it's hard for me not to overanalyze because, you know, I feel like there's producers that, and it's, and, it's, and like, it's sometimes it's like very confusing for me as a music artist to say shit like this because when I make music, it's like me really expressing like emotions and shit. And a lot of times, like, I hear music, I'm like, nah, bro, like, you, was you really that aggressive? Yes. You know, like, yes, yeah. bro. And you, and you, and you wanted to put this publicly? <laughs> Bro, like, like this world hurt me. That's, that's what, like, <laughs> like you was yes. you was hearing machine gun sounds, yeah. and you wanted to push this out. Nah, bro, we, we like, were I'm hearing just machine like, guns on acid type. Like, yeah, <laughs> nah, there's, I think, like, like tarot, bro. Like, I'm like, dude, like tarot's intense. Yeah. Like, you know, I I fuck with rhythm, but tarot, I feel like for me, that's not my. Cup. I can't go through like a hour of tarot. I could go through an hour of a rhythm set, mm-hmm. but tarot for me, I'm just like, okay. Where's the patio? I need to take a yeah. little breather real quick. It's it gets intense. Yeah. Like I was at Space Yacht, I think, for Emorphic. Like one of my friends was playing, so I was just like, "Fuck it, he has a guest list spot. Like, let me just go see what's good." And um, it was like Emorphic's like LA debut, and Versa was also playing. Emorphic, too. true. Yeah, yeah. So he's like all about the angry, angry shit, you know. And I was like in there, and I was like, "Damn." everyone's just mad moshing right now like this is like overwhelming like i gotta go outside i'm scared mom pick me up like <laughs> you know it's funny because you said who hurt you but like i'm thinking about it now like why do i want to go to like a dubstep show or something like that and it's like but when i'm like mad not mad but like when i just need to like release let it go yeah like let's go ahead bang. Like, yeah fuck it yeah rod is on but like that's yeah. that's effort. That isn't an emotion. Like, they are producing emotion when they're making that type of music. Like, yeah. you gotta, like, you gotta it, be angry as fuck to be producing I that I guess type my of question music. is, yeah. is it designated or is it genuine? You know what I'm saying? Because you could designate the emotion. You feel me? Because you could go into production and designate yourself to feel a certain type of way. Mm-hmm. I feel like, uh, as a producer, I've done that, where I've designated my emotions. Mm-hmm. Like, I've gone, I've opened up a producing session, and I wasn't really too excited about it but i was able to like delegate my emotions to be more positive mm-hmm. and uh, i'm like i was able to like you know direct my emotions like that so my question a lot of times when i hear these tarot tracks like are they opening it up and it's just strictly like what uh like how they're feeling genuinely or is it just like a no like i'm not angry but i'm gonna make some really angry shit for angry people because mm-hmm. I, I i could i could do that I, I specialize in that like that's that's not, like where i'm trying to figure out mm-hmm. with some of these producers like, are you really genuinely hurt? Like, or, you're hurt? Like, yeah. or are you just, are, are you, I'm like, feeling yeah, are, you, are you calibrated yeah. enough to, like, do this type of music but still be, uh, like, I guess all right? I don't yeah. know. I'm not yeah. saying. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. So, like, coming from someone that, like, makes tear out and dubstep and stuff like that, yeah. I feel like it's more of, like, uh, 
bro, I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> I'm feeling some type of shit, and yeah. these sounds is 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 ma- making sense to me. I right can't now. agree that. that. That's what it is. Like this is what's making sense to me. So I'm just gonna keep 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 it going. Keep and the flow keep, moving. Yeah, like, yeah, and just keep it aggressive and like. Like that's, I think that's what it is sometimes, right? Yeah, that makes sense. To be fair, yeah. I've I've had that kind of connection too, where when I'm making some shit, I I, I don't know what's going on, but I feel it feels right. Same. And, and a lot of times it's coming out. It could be coming out like as aggressive as a tarot track or or whatever that uh, direction in the production goes into. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, but it just depends on the session. To be fair, like, and whatever you're feeling, like sometimes I'll just be like. Oh, I'm gonna make techno, you know, like whatever. Like, and I'll just, and I found out I'm really good at making techno because I don't listen to techno like that. Oh, so, like, okay. I have like a clearer perspective of like a fresh, take yeah, on a fresh take on it. You know what I mean? You're not so ingrained so. with like what techno needs to be, type yeah, shit. exactly, exactly. So, so it sounds like when you get on to produce, like, depending on your mood, is like the genre you're gonna make, kind of, I'd say, okay. like. I do like to make rhythm a lot of the time just because I just love the sound design in it. It's like so unique. But um, yeah, honestly, it really just depends. Sometimes I'll fucking make house like what? (laughs) Like I'll make house or like something random, you know, just I've made like drum and bass. I've made like hyper pop before, too. So like it really just whatever. I oh, gotta, you gotta send over that hyper pump. Oh, yeah. Hyper pump oh yeah, over. I got you. I got you. I'll send over. I'll send over all the steps. <laughs> now, what what do you usually do uh, to hunt new music? Like, what's your process like? Uh, Ooh, um, most definitely, I love checking out like new releases on like uh, a lot of good, you know, just comps or whatever. You know, like Disciple Roundtable. I'll always check out like Disciple. Um, I'll check out, you know, all the all the big dubstep names. Like, I'll even go back and look at, like, Never Say Die stuff and, like, all that. Like, I'll just look at, you know, most the most recent comps. Um, my friends are really inspiring, I'd say. Like, I produce with a lot of... I've gotten the chance to produce with a lot of really talented people. So, just learning from them and uh, their music and... Yeah, so I'd say, like, finding, even just, like, finding tracks and stuff, like, the main way, I'd say, is SoundCloud. Just SoundCloud diving, just finding new artists, like, like, there's the rhythm, the rhythm world is so funny, like, there's a lot of secret aliases on SoundCloud, but they'll just have, like, an anime profile Fuck picture, yeah, yeah. and then they'll have, like, the name of the pic, like... The craziest, wackiest, like, artwork yeah, of all time. and then it'll just be, like, the most insane rhythm tunes, but no <laughs> one knows who it is, like, you know, and you're just like, oh my gosh, I need this, I need this now, but it's, like, probably your favorite producer, and you just don't know it, <laughs> you know, like, so... Yeah, so that's, like, definitely, like, going through, like, SoundCloud and, like, stations and, like, putting on, like, all that stuff. That's, like, my favorite way to find. And also listening to mixes, I'd say. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, if someone's generous enough to leave a track list, uh, I find a lot of new music that way. All right, I got you. You said uh, that you like to put on stations. That's Mm -hmm. something that I just recently... I'm such a dumb... Like, I, I, I recently found out, like, that's an actual feature. You can make your own station out of, like, the track A track you like, and to. it'll play similar songs. Uh-huh. And, yeah. like, it, and that's different than the related tracks that, like, you could push on. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. what? Literally, like, three weeks... Like, two, three weeks ago, I found that out. And I was yeah. like... I'm about to start searching for a music. I think even your artist profile, your artist profile has like its own station. Yeah, like, you can go like on mobile. You could go over to some X or Zion Don, and yeah. uh, you could uh, click on the artist profile station, and then mm-hmm. uh, the AI will like determine that station and its selection for you and shit. Yeah, based yes. on the artist. Mm-hmm. It's just wild. It's fucking yeah. Uh, technology and algorithms is crazy. SoundCloud yeah. has the best though. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I got to sponsor us or something, bro. Like, <laughs> I like dead ass. Like, I think we've, we've mentioned them almost used, every episode. They used like, me as, as a fucking uh, marketing 
uh, content. Yeah, bro, like we got, we got to email them, what? fam. Like, bro, shit. Like, honestly, <laughs> I'm entitled to a trip, bro. Yeah. yeah. It's in New York, I think. Fuck it. Yeah. I think I got some power shit. Walk into that headquarters. Right? Come on. Let's hey, see what's up. Let's sponsor see what's up. us now. A lot of flag <laughs> SoundCloud gets, but I think it's all like, stay true. Uh, uh, orange SoundCloud <laughs> right here would, would be perfect, right? Come on, SoundCloud. What's that? Yeah. I'm surprised uh, SoundCloud hasn't done like their own series of like music festivals. It's because I know they do a yeah. lot of like pop ups, like with certain uh, mm-hmm. artists. But like, I would uh, honestly, I would, in this day and age, that'd be interesting to see how that goes because like of more power to the underground. There's right? so much di- diversity yeah. on SoundCloud. Like, yeah. what what genre of festival would they throw? You know, just yeah. like a stage of every different. Because yeah, because I would assume they they'd be using the their music data from just their own platform. Like, mm-hmm. if they're really trying to like, you know. Do a festival just based off like their actual artists. So I wonder how a SoundCloud music EDM music festival will look like. Cause I, I know a lot of the music festivals, uh, they're being thrown, especially like the big ones like Insomniac. Mm-hmm. A lot of times like booking agencies have a really big play as to what slots to get filled up. So I want yeah. I wonder like what that lineup will look like if SoundCloud was in that position where they're not dealing with big booking agencies, but they're now able to deal directly with oh. artists and shit and be like, hey, like we would like you to like we think from the soccer perspective, we'd be good. At, it'd be good to have you. I think I I think it would go off of like streams. To be fair, like okay. uh, artists in their streams and popularity. I got you. No, yeah. for sure. And like the quality of the music, I'd say. They're following. Yeah, 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 they're following. Social media, huge part. Huge part. Well, see, like that's a big reason why a bunch of people do go to booking agencies because mm-hmm. the booking agencies are the art ones that are already curated that part for them you know and that's exactly. why they're getting these slots and stuff is because the booking agency already knows that they could sell tickets they know they have streams mm-hmm. so that's why like you see these mm-hmm. people on these lineups and stuff and i think it would be very difficult for uh a soundcloud festival just because like these are all underground artists mm-hmm. and like Right. SoundCloud yeah. reps the underground, yeah. For yeah, sure. yeah, for a hundred percent. And maybe like some of the more most indie, right? Yeah. yeah. Way much more indie. And who knows if they'll even have people come out to see them. Maybe the people that like listening to their music are the people that just like to be at home and listen to music, you know? Yeah. yeah. And also like it's such a broad spectrum of listeners that it's like yeah. where where would they throw the festival, you know? And like like Facts. if there's Facts. like an artist like in Ukraine for whatever reason that you really like and they like happen to be on this SoundCloud festival lineup but it's in Belgium like how are you gonna go you know like exactly. it's gonna be a pain it's an arm and a leg to get there you know yeah, no, yeah. yeah. I feel like it's a really hard thing to do for, like during a festival it's super and like you even said this earlier like all, the same people are on the lineups and mm-hmm. stuff like that but there's a reason why the same people are on these lineups like they, they have a for sure fan base that are going to have people come out to come see them like it's there's a reason why there's so many people on these festivals line up because Talent it's hard so, far, to bring yeah. so many people to just go see one per, like not yeah. many people could do that you it know? depends if you could sell out a club sell yeah. out a venue sell yeah. out a stadium yeah. that's what that, really they the promoters care about at the end of the day the people who are buying the talent i guess and like not to pivot this conversation but i want to bring this up real quick like mm-hmm. uh a lot of people were mad over like the whole beyonce grammy winning thing and whatnot oh yeah but like and they were they were saying like oh this person should have got the grammy this person should have got the grammy but like people forget to like look at the grand scope of edm and their favorite edm dj and how much impact they think their their favorite EDM DJ really had. Mm-hmm. They might have only had like somewhat of an impact in that genre, in the EDM space, in that niche festival scene. Yeah. Uh-huh. Beyonce had an impact whole world. Yeah, she's not, mainstream pop. Yeah, not, yeah. not just, just the niche EDM world. Like, bro, you heard her music, like her remixes at all these EDM face- festivals. Like, mm-hmm. you might have not heard the originals, but... You've heard the remixes. I'm pretty damn sure. You, you everyone knows who Beyonce is. Yeah, yeah you, like, she played, she performed at the Super Bowl. Like, yeah. And that's what people don't understand. She could literally go to where EDC is thrown at and sell that shit out by herself. 
Mm-hmm. She doesn't need all these other people on her. So like mm-hmm. that's that's where like people don't really connect. Like people got to. I sometimes got to realize, damn, like dubstep and rhythm isn't as big as I wish it it's is. Not, it's not. It's it's a know, very like, it's very niche. Like especially rhythm, it's super niche. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very niche stuff. Like. It, it only appeals to a certain target audience, you know? So there's only so many people who like this type of music. Like, you could play rhythm for someone who's, like, never heard dubstep in their life. And they'd be like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this? Like, this is just computer noises. Like, these are literally two robots having sex. Like, like that's what rhythm is. Like, <laughs> robots having sex sound like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, it's a for I guess. yeah, I'm just picturing two toasters for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's very niche. But I love that it's so niche. It's it's like it's almost. Have you guys seen the? Oh my god, the documentary on YouTube. Um, all my homies hate Skrillex. The reason why I stopped liking dubstep. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the video we watched? The. It's like how long is it? It's like thirty like minutes? minutes. It's like an hour, I think. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty much like yeah. an I don't. May it came out a while ago. Yeah, like, I think yeah. so. I think mm-hmm. I've seen. I love rewatching it, like every now and then. It like really gets into how dubstep became like even more mainstream, and like how Skrillex really changed yeah, like the sound completely, and it just became a completely different thing to a completely different market. Yeah. Which is so crazy. And then they started like touring you all in like the South African or uh, South American market and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. What's that? I was about to say, that's how I feel about the Carnage uh, documentary. No, mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, that's. <laughs> No, that's why, like, a lot of these artists, though, like, mm-hmm. they're on these lineups because they can pull people. And mm-hmm. it's important. It's really important to get people out yeah. to these events, no matter what the case may be, how you get them. Like, mm-hmm. it's important for them to be here so that they can enjoy EDM music at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. Like, that's that's the main goal, right? Mm-hmm. Like, as a com- not just as an artist, like, take your art, like, just you as an artist out of it. Mm-hmm. As the community, what's the end goal? Yeah. Of everything. What, uh, what is that? Uh, to have the message uh, known to as much people. As many people yeah. as possible, mm-hmm. right? So as many people as you could get to wherever you're trying to spread your music or message at, right? That's what you got to do at the end of the day, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's hard. It's hard as yeah, fuck. It's, hard it's as definitely fun. not easy. Especially if you're trying to stand on like some like very moral, like... Mm-hmm ground of like talent wins talent and this mm-hmm. and that but like that's not business there's a lot think. of people who just will come into the industry and just have like an upper hand on so many people because of who they know and stuff so yeah. it's like it really just it kind of is all about who you know right time right place like talent obviously because you need to prove yourself and you know just like luck Kind of. Good luck, yeah. So, yeah. I'd say that's what I'd say, to be fair. That's yeah, a bit of everything that plays all into factor. Like, luck, I, I think luck also does play a big part, too. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I like to think that a lot of the, a lot of, like, my personal achievements, like, so a lot of, a lot of luck has to, like, show me some luck, bro. Let me guess. I some. mean, shit, uh, just let me know how to transfer the luck and I'm down, bro. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how to transfer that luck. I mean, I don't know, bro. Like, uh, I guess I would just kind of translate over to like whatever advice I could give to people like if they're asking questions in terms of like what kind of question they're asking. And that's the only way I could just uh, I guess transfer my personal luck is just like share any experience that I got that was positive and mm-hmm. like achievable for me. And no, I mean I don't know. Fucking that's uh, that's crazy. It's mm-hmm. sometimes hard too when you get presented by opportunities and sometimes the factors are not present. Like yeah. the determining factor. I feel. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a lot of times. Not only say a lot. I feel like there was a few times where uh, there was definitely opportunities uh, presented to me. Mm-hmm. I took them, 
But at the time, I wasn't too sure exactly what was the determining factor why I took him. Yeah. And, but later on, like with experience, I, I, I can't, you analyze the exact, some scenes and you understand a lot more about what happened in that chapter as to why you take certain opportunities. Mm. Uh, and then like all that, like again, that's like the experience that you can't really buy. Yeah. Like, you go through it and uh, yeah, a lot of uh, luck plays a big part. Knowing uh, who, you, who know. you know. Yeah. Like, like, because like, you know. the whole digital space, like, oh yeah, I know this person, like I've seen him around on digital, but it's not until like, the way you know shit is not like it's like that's like the in person real life shit like mm-hmm. oh okay like I've actually seen this person play or I've actually interacted with this person mm-hmm. uh no no bad blood with them or yeah, so it far makes a difference I, for sure <laughs> like most certainly it does because you can even have the talent but honestly if you're an, a- an asshole like I'm most likely not really gonna like if I'm in a, in a position to provide an opportunity or. Mm-hmm vouch for an opportunity for someone mm-hmm. uh and, like if you're being an asshole although you do got the t- t- uh, the qualifying talent mm-hmm. to do the pro- part i'll probably most likely just give it to someone else that i have a much more better mm-hmm. like connection with uh, it, versus like an, an asshole i guess right it's sometimes not even like that like it, it's it's who you know and like just how you are in general how you present yourself like it it goes a long way because even if you were like i met you before and like we just had a real cordial like like meeting or whatever like i'm and then versus me having another experience with someone where like it was more than just cordial it was like oh wow it was energy you know i felt energy Mm -hmm. like and then you have to make a decision in like a long run right what are you going to remember more? The the one cordial conversation or the person that, like, you had energy with more, mm-hmm. you know? Like, yeah. that's what stands out, I think. And, like, mm-hmm. that's why it's, like, when you're going out, like, it's not just you, like, just meeting these people. Like, just because you said hey to someone doesn't mean that they're going to give you some type of opportunity or anything like that. It's if they thought, like, what you guys are talking about was cool, if you got a connection, that's what's going to, you know, ultimately determine, like, what's going to go on or, like, how your <sighs> you guys' relationship relationship keeps going you know like yeah. i think that's how it is you just got to make like a positive impact on people i think sometimes mm-hmm. that's it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. all right now where do we take this uh tempo yeah tempo? 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 No. oh actually before we end this what's your favorite tempo 147 147 147 till I uh, die damn wow. till you die shit mm-hmm. well let me ask you this are you dying alone or are you dying with plenty of people like is there other people that vouch for 147 too oh yeah I mean cause that, this is okay, like, like my see. first time hearing someone say like 147 what, like as a favorite tempo yeah. it's usually 145 or 140 or oh, yeah 150 I mean I know Maya she plays on 147 damn I think uh I think Casey plays at 146. Um, I think, yeah, one, like I write in 140 a lot of the time. Like most of the time I write in 140 or 145. But when I'm playing live, 147. Yeah. Always. Oh, even, even even if like the tracks are not 147, you are you stay on that tempo. Like, yeah. Your life set. 147. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Do you have sync on? Do you play with sync? Uh, it really depends. Most of the time. Well, like... It depends on the magnitude of the show, I'd say. Oh, okay. um, interesting. Yeah, just because if I'm in front of, like, thousands of people, I'm not going to mess up a transition. Like, you know what I mean? So you'll, but, you'll, uh, you'll use the sync. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, like, the thing is, my mixing style is very, like, different. I can use sync, like, or not use sync. And I have not used sync. So, sorry, wow. Not used sync in the past. Like, right. if I'm playing house music, I won't fucking use sync. Like, I'm just mixing so fast, realistically. I do not have a lot of the time to Manually tempo slide. Yeah. Got I, it. Yeah. Because I'm transitioning, like, every 16 bars. Like, I'm going quick. Like, I'm chopping, 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 and then playing right into the next. Yeah, like, and, and also, too, this yeah. is something that I, oh, I sometimes also forget mm-hmm. when i'm performing is that sometimes i mm-hmm. almost make the mistake of mixing a track before i even set it to its mm-hmm. to its like predecessor tempo mm-hmm. uh so i i mean i think over time i mean it's a tool that you could use yeah uh, i definitely yeah you i'd say you you can use it it's there for a reason like obviously if you feel that it's necessary for you to use it then use it but no obviously 
don't only use sync. Like you need to learn how to beat match. Like if you can't beat match, then you're gonna be fucked. Like if you can't do it by ear. Like okay. you know what I mean? So like like turning sync off, like if it was broken for some reason or anything, I would not have a single issue. Like, you know, I would just be mixing a lot slower for sure. But like Yeah, because now you're actually yeah. using some time that you would use to do the quick other quick stuff, yeah, but, but I have time to manually. adjust the tempo because I play songs anywhere from 140 to 150, so like it automatically goes to the 147 when you have, yeah, on. if I have it on the master, so yeah, so I don't have to adjust. You yeah. feel like yeah. 147 is that uh good middle sound for you then mm -hmm. for that whole BPM range, yeah? I think, Definitely. I think like it's perfect for rhythm because it like it, 140 is like too slow for me, so I'll always play at 147, mm -hmm. it just like pushes it right there, so. When you're live, like the energy is still going. That's what I do with if I'm DJing house music or bass house music. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just sitting at 128. I'm putting sync on, or well, I only use sync for the BPMs, right? Mm -hmm. So honestly, I don't feel like do I really have to move two BPMs down to 128 to 126? Does yeah. that make a big difference? Like, yeah, I really don't think so. So I'm just gonna set it to 128. Mm -hmm. When it comes to bass music, though. My shit's everywhere, and like sometimes I like mm. the sound of the original BPM. So I'm a like mm. I'm on fucking the, the yeah. BPM. I always leave master tempo on. I know that's like a controversial thing. Like leaving the master tempo on. Mm -hmm. I never really messed around with that. Can you go a little more? Like, yeah. With that? So master tempo when it's on with sync, it pretty much leaves the like um, the original sound of the track. But when master tempo is off it will warp it to whatever BPM it's at. Like, the, so it'll pitch it either higher or lower, if that makes sense. Got like, it. depending on if you're speeding it up or slowing it down. Mm -hmm. So like it'll it. speed the song up and it'll speed the pitch up too. But Master Tempo takes the pitch out. But I know that it can also render the audio quality, apparently. Um, but for li like live mixing, I always leave it on because it's like... The crowd will recognize the song the a lot faster. Change. Yeah, yeah, because no, the pitch change will on, work sure. it. Yeah. yeah. So whenever we hear like that Alvin and the Chip Monkey type vocal, mm -hmm. like it's because they have that shit off. Yeah. And I mean, I've seen people get creative with having it off, like mm -hmm. when they're moving, like uh, yeah. But I can't even remember. But like I've seen a lot of creative people do transitions with that shit. And mm -hmm. uh, but I just think like for me, I don't, I can't, I can't. Mm -hmm. I need it to sound like the original or mm -hmm. else it's going to throw me off. Yeah, I, I like to leave it on most of the time. Uh, and it's yeah. throwing me off too when DJs mm -hmm. do a BPM transition mm -hmm. specifically in their sets and they don't have the master tempo and I'm mm -hmm. like, I want to like this but I can't like this for some yeah. reason. Like, I just hear the pitch bend and like, it's, yeah. this is not authentic to mm -hmm. me. Like sounding, I need the Bro, turn on the master tempo on next time. Shit. Yeah, like I get it <laughs> if it, if you're like only playing like songs at that are distinctly 145 or distinctly 140, and that's everything in your playlist. Uh -huh. Like that's fine, I guess. You don't need to have it on, but like because you're moving all of it up or all of it down at the same time. But like when you're, I don't know. I just it, if you're using sync, you should be using master tempo, in my opinion. So. Look, I think if you're very uh, musically trained. Mm -hmm. I think you could get away with having it off because mm -hmm. you could realize the key mm -hmm. as you're moving it. Mm -hmm. But if you're not that good at like detecting key mm -hmm. and like knowing the key of the song that's actually going to be or playing and switch to, yeah, yeah, like then it's probably going to hurt you more than that. You yeah. Know? But I was, like, I don't know. I wish I could fucking fine tune my ear like that. I mean, mm -hmm. I could probably tell you some chords, but I can't. I mm -hmm. can't. You know, I but think vocals is hard as fuck. Do you guys use sync or? No. Uh, nah, but I'll use it whenever I have to make a transition from like a, a different tempo range. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if I'm playing rhythm, I want to go into bass house. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll make the bass house track the current rhythm or bass track. Mm -hmm. So it'll be like 128 going to like 150 and then I'll use sync to like move up the master move, yeah. well yeah i'll move it down in this case because yeah. i want to oh, go yeah. from yeah. dubstep to bass house yeah. so now i'll start you i'll start like moving it using down. the sync so that way when i'm moving it down towards the, the original it's, mm -hmm. it's like transitioning through the, the same, same time, time yeah I, something i don't have on though that a lot of people i've noticed use is quantization yeah I, why do i always keep quantize on why on yeah um this is the grinning right and yeah box and like especially mm -hmm. when you're chopping like mm -hmm. to be exact exact like exactly. you see i've tried messing around with quantization and for some reason my alignment 
my experience has never been very accurate. That's why I like, uh, which is why I like that you mm-hmm. brought up the whole like be matching by ear. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's like my source of like mixing. Is mm-hmm. like I try not to rely. I should experiment a little bit more. I feel, mm-hmm. but I, I I try not to rely too much on like the technology because I always like to mm-hmm. uh, make sure that I'm doing the due diligence of like hearing that it's being be matched correctly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, maybe yeah. it's just like. Maybe at least my issue with this is that maybe I'm not too knowledgeable and mm-hmm. how the grading system works in record box. So that could also yeah. be a factor. Of- oh, yeah. I, I like pre analyze all of my grids always in record box. So, oh, I see. Okay. yeah. So, either way, like I know that that grid is always going to be on that kick because I've already pre done it. If it's going in my, one of my playlists, like I make sure I do it. But so it's like a safety feature for you having that yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that and also just when you're like chopping like that it can throw off the songs like i don't know why it happens when quantize is off but um no, yeah i it yeah does. so i leave it on because i do do a lot of back and forth so see the way you're explaining why you use it it makes a lot of sense because mm-hmm. like to me i couldn't make sense of it like mm-hmm. why? it felt like because i come from using turntables and like mm-hmm. constantly touching like the yeah the, the record right and mm-hmm. then like i'm constantly usually touching the jog wheel speeding mm-hmm. it up moving it forward and then constantly pressing like the hot cues yeah the cue, right mm-hmm. and anytime like and i'll have headphones on so like i want to hear like the cue like mm-hmm. when i'm hitting it like on point as yeah. i'm doing it but when i have quantize on mm-hmm. it won't do that and, yeah like, it, it stresses me out i'm like yeah. no you need to when I push yeah. this button, you need to hit the cue right here yeah. too. Like, yeah. And then, but now that you're saying it's because when you're, I have to start getting mm-hmm. like switching my mindset into what you're saying, chopping and stuff. Mm-hmm. You're doing a routine. Like yeah. that's what you're doing. You're getting it. So you, your routine comes down. Yeah. It's just a completely different art form. Yeah. Like it's still mixing, but in a completely different way yeah. that people aren't used to. And like, I still use the jog wheel. Like, don't like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but I'll, 90% of the time my hands are on the mixer so yeah. it's, it's like well, cause that, that's yeah. an important part yeah, <laughs> yeah. when you uh, when you're mixing these days uh, do you do you do like the extra the extra shit like uh, when I say like the extra shit like can I, can I see myself sometimes doing the extra shit too where mm-hmm. like I'm just touching a knob just for no goddamn reason like just to make it seem like mm-hmm. like I'm doing some <laughs> shit like, I've seen artists too it's like where like it's like it's like, no, nah, you don't really have to be, like, touching a knob. Like, you yeah. can just be, like, dancing or something. Yeah. Like, no, nah, I dance. I, like, will be there. Now, like, <laughs> just, like, do, you know, I just, when I need to solo a, solo a track out, that's when I'll touch it, you know? Mm. Like, obviously, I'll fuck with the EQs, but, like, a lot of the time I do chopping and stuff. So, right. it's, like, yeah, my hands are normally touching the mixer. Like, whether it's, like, I'm mixing in another track and moving the mids up or you know, cutting the lows on another one and then soloing, bringing it back in. Like, you know, just like my, I'm always moving. Like, especially because I go like, the way I mix, I go double drop into double drop. Like, I don't really give myself like time to like build. Like, I'm like, okay, this drop, this drop, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, you know? So yeah, it just realistically, like with the way I mix, it's very... Like it's I mix fast. Like I mix. how many tracks have you chopped all at once? I mean, I've done four. Yeah, four. Yeah, okay. but like I honestly feel this might be controversial to me, like to other people, but for me, I feel like a double is just like the most it needs to go. You know, like triples are cool, like when you're like playing three songs at once and chopping, but like I it gets like muddy. Like there's Sorry. like too many sounds going on, you know. So like. Sometimes you can get away with triples, but quads just get a little overwhelming. Like it's like okay. a, a lot, especially when it's like quad drop after quad drop after quad drop. You know, it's crazy you say that because I've heard people where they say quadruple dropping is not enough. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, like, they were like, unless you're squinto, it's enough. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like fucking like I I had seen this mixer where it was like eight channels or twelve channels. I don't know. They were like it was a pioneer mixer. Too. They like, just came out with that six channel mixer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, damn. And I'm over here like, bro, there's your mixer right there. Four and enough. That six fucking mix. Yeah, oh Cod Doves. He did a six deck set. It was a boiler room set. In, in, bro, where do you even find yeah, a table long enough for six decks? Like, yeah, bro. For, bro where am I gonna? <laughs> where, yeah. then, where am I gonna put it inside my house, fam? Like. 
I need a yeah. big ass fucking place for six decks, bro. Come Straight on, up. That's, that's not right. <laughs> that's not right. Yeah. What yeah. do you like more, indoor or outdoor uh, sets? Um, it really just depends on the atmosphere. Outside? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I just get really hot inside. I feel like being outside is fun. Okay. Like, I don't know. You have a little more scenery versus being in a packed club. I guess. Okay. Yeah. So. Not you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I believe it. Um, okay. So we talked about production earlier. I asked this to most people or everyone that comes through that produces mm-hmm. uh, favorite VST just before we close this out. Ooh. Favorite VST. Something that's always open that you're always going to be pulling up in your projects. Hmm. It could be anything, a distortion plugin, a limiting plugin, whatever. It Just is. any plugin ever. Yeah. Um, a hex bell? <laughs> I have, okay, for my, I have a rack that I like always use and it has like for my bases and I have like a very like certain, like, I guess I'm going to say a saturator. saturator. I use a saturation on everything. And then uh, the Kilo Hearts Disperser. Kilo Hearts Disperser. Kilo Hearts Disperser. That I've never heard of that. I'm gonna look into it. That one is really good. It's it's a really good disperser tool. I really like it. Um, it's a, what the, like pretty much the one that every like rhythm DJ uses is the Kilo Hearts one. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Damn. So. All right. That's that's the sauce right there for me. Yeah. Music. It just makes it gives a lot more width and depth into the sound with the disperser on. So yeah, that's what I'd say. <laughs> Favorite plugins from you currently, Robert? Uh, Anything change? Right. Nah, I'm going to... I am going to say, though, uh, the digital slate compressor. Uh, I don't know the FL stuff, but... Yeah, yeah well, it's third party. I, I oh, downloaded third party. it. third party. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, It's just called digital slate, and it's just mm-hmm. a compressor. Mm-hmm. Amazing. It has, like, a compressor, and then on top... Or on the... It's like two... It's like if you... If it was a rack... The top rack would be a compressor and the bottom half would be like an actual uh, saturator. Yeah. And like it, I don't know, it, it puts a lot of um, nice. nice high end on like synths and stuff. I like Hell it a yeah. lot. What about you? This answer might be a little different because it's not necessarily like an effects plugin per se, but I've been trying to get more uh, better at my mastering. So like mm-hmm. Isotope Ozo 9 nice. like, has been my like favorite plugin that i've been spending a lot of time with mm-hmm. uh because effects plugin you know there's like certain reverbs that's delays even, is that third party or fl third party. that's third party okay. isotope ozone 9 and uh like i think it's a really great plugin for mastering mm-hmm. like it, you could definitely get like really in depth especially if you learn how like each each uh, effects works on isotope ozone like mm-hmm. you could definitely uh Decorated. Decorated a lot, a lot much more specific to your mastering. You uh, like factor, yeah. yeah. If you like using it for your mastering, they have just their effects rack that you can use for just your like individual like vocals and stuff mm-hmm. that you don't have to be opening up that whole ass isotope. Because I know uh, when you open up isotope for your master, it does a lot on your CPU. Mm-hmm. Hell they, yeah. have, they basically have like a miniature like rack. So like each of those. Oh, that's uh, right. Uh, and for drones, vocals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the parameters, you know how you like add it up at the top, right? You could basically put each one of those on like just drums and stuff like that. Oh, that's so, really neat. Yeah, if yeah. you if you want to like, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, I use them on vocals. Honestly, I use that on vocals. It's the best thing. Like, nice. Cleans them up, yeah, I need to like. Oh man, I was gonna say G Clip. G Clip. G Clip. It's a really good clipper. Um, third soft party clipper? one. Yeah, soft clipper. Um, but. Uh, I like to throw like I like to use uh, clippers a lot um, but for some reason on my new Mac I've like talked to a bunch of people about this I've talked to Zuba about this I've talked to Leotrix about this like I've talked to everyone about this for some reason the M1 chip is not compatible with like certain VSTs and external plugins so like there's a bunch like G clip that like I can't use on my current laptop yeah because it's not compatible to the M1 chip that Apple has switched That's over because they're not using Intel Core anymore. Mm, all right. Yeah, so, yeah. That's why you get PC and then you get everything cracked, bro. True. Crack <laughs> all your VS. No, Cracked don't everything. do that. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. If you value your projects, you probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hex. Well, we're here in any segment of the spotlight. Let's do, uh, let's do announcements. Uh, anything that we can expect from Hex within the next uh, couple of weeks, couple of months. New music, new All shows. Right. We talked about the one you're doing with Lays. Yeah, uh, Lays is coming up. Um, that's March 11th. So if you're in San Francisco, I guess get tickets for Lays at DNA Lounge uh, with Resurrect. And um, yes, uh, make sure to check out Sorcery Sessions, uh, the guest mixes for the Witches Project. We've so far had uh, Ben's Mixer and Casey, and we're going to have, I guess I'll announce it on this podcast, but we're having Suba next. Mm, yeah, nice. so, and then we're going to have Zabor after. So it's going to be really fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so forward. just, yeah, keep your eye out for the Witches stuff. And then, yeah, go stream um, Bitchcraft Volume 2, my new mix. We'll make sure to leave everything in the description. Yeah. Go ahead and follow Hex for all <laughs> upcoming announcements, upcoming music, upcoming ventures. Thank y'all for tuning in. This is a new episode of the Spotlight. Here with our special guest. Make sure to go ahead and follow Zion Don. Link in the description. Hex links in the description. Uh, myself link in the description. If you guys like today's episode, uh, subscribe to the channel for more content. Uh, give us a thumbs up and hit the bell alert button to stay notified. Uh, we're also are streaming on Twitch. So if you guys want to head on over, subscribe to our, or follow, subscribe, whatever that looks like on Twitch. Uh, we're just getting back into it with the live streaming. So we'll be doing live streaming usually the day before the upload date, mm -hmm. uh, like how we're doing right now. So everyone that's on Twitch, uh, this episode will be uploaded uh, later tomorrow, this week. Uh, we're going to be doing Guess That Tempo uh, real soon. I'm not right. sure we're doing that live. No. Um, well, not, 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 not at this moment, but yeah. you'll still, we'll catch Guess That Tempo this upcoming week. I'm excited to do uh, that it's always exciting. That's <laughs> yeah. always exciting. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. So, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, YouTube and SoundCloud. Uh, thank you guys for your support. Go ahead and support Hex. Hey. Follow her, yeah. and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace out, guys. Take care. Thanks for having me. Yep. <laughs>